Hello everyone and welcome to another complete growing guide here on the MI Gardener channel. I'm so excited for this one because we're going to be talking about one of my favorite leafing vegetables, kale. Kale is a great leafing vegetable and those for those of you that have not tried kale, you've got to. It is a delicious green, whether sauteed, fresh in salads, thrown in juices or smoothies. I cook it up and eat it just about any way. Um, and because it is just such a versatile vegetable, it's so high in vitamin K and vitamin A and C and uh, fiber. It's super high in protein. It's just a great all around vegetable. So what you wanna do when growing kale is you wanna pick a place that gets about four to five hours of sun. Typically, you can't go any less than that unless you want anemic looking kale. And the, the more sunlight you get, the healthier your kale is going to be and the more nutrients you're going to have in it. Because part of the thing is that it starts with a healthy plan. If you want very healthy greens for your body, you've got to give it the best environment so that it can be the healthiest. So uh, what I always do is I basically treat my plants like I want to basically treat my body. And so I put them in a place where they're going to get lots of sun to generate lots of energy for the plant. Like I said, about four to five hours is is what this zone gets here. But up at the cottage where we plant lots of kale, it typically gets about eight to 10 hours of sun, which is, oh, that's awesome. You know, they're not gonna be complaining. The, the more sun they get, the better. So just no more than, uh, no less than four hours. And then when it comes to the soil, just about everything gets this here. This is a pure compost bed. So it's just pure compost and some old potting soil we've thrown in throughout the years. And that's what we give them. 100% organic compost because they really like that organic matter. They're very heavy feeders. And so the more, basically the more nitrogen and the more organic matter they get, the better they're going to do. Because like we talked about with the broccoli and like we're also gonna talk about with the Swiss chard in, in an upcoming growing guide, they, they really need that nitrogen because they are leafing crops. They're not like tomatoes. They're not like cucumbers or peppers where they're producing a fruit. They actually are, their only focus is producing leaves. And so nitrogen is responsible for producing leaves. And so obviously the more nitrogen you give them, the more leaves they're gonna put out and the bigger they're going to be, which equals more food for you to eat. So there you go. So I typically give mine a lot of trifecta. That's why I feed all my plants here in the garden. So you're probably noticing a common theme with growing guides. I use trifecta, but use what you want. Blood meal is a great example of a nitrogen rich fertilizer that you can use. Um, but obviously I also like to give them a well-rounded, well-balanced fertilizer. And that's what kind of trifecta covers. So Obviously, I would suggest mixing that with a little bit of green sand, um, some rock phosphate, and maybe a little bone meal as well to give them an all-around mix that's gonna benefit all needs, uh, but only if you want. Obviously, the nitrogen is the biggest component, and, uh, and that's what I would stress for this growing guide at least. So now let's talk about temperature. When it comes to temperature, kale are a very cold, hardy crop, and you can plant them way before the, the threat of last frost is over. So it is April 20th here, and what we wanna do is we wanna basically plant out right now because the sooner we get it in the garden, the sooner we can start harvesting basically. Because the fact of the matter is, is that even if it gets below 30 degrees, they're not even gonna, they're not even gonna care. They're gonna say, oh, are you kidding me? Give me 28, I'll, I'll, still, I'll still take 28. Oh, 28, give me 25. I've found that my, my kale often overwinters. And here in Michigan, we get weather down to 18 degrees, 10 degrees on average in the coldest part of winter, even sometimes negative digits. And they're still fine in the springtime. So the sooner you can work the soil, that's when I put my kale out. And then the next thing also, is when it comes to cold weather, they can also tolerate hot weather. So again, the sooner you can put them out, the sooner you can start harvesting and they're gonna last all season long, which is another reason why I love them. You know, you can pretty much plant them and harvest them all season. You don't have to worry about turning the crop over until the end of, until the end of summer, fall, when you wanna plant a different crop or get it ready for next year. So now coming in close, let's talk about spacing and I'm just gonna talk about the soil type, kind of look at the texture of what I'm, what I'm growing in so you can have an idea of what you should be growing in as well. All right, so I'm just going to space my plants. I got four plants here. I'm gonna space them about eight to 10 inches apart. I'm not, a, I'm not big on spacing. I don't like to stress out about spacing is what I'm trying to say. It's something that if it's too crowded, it's too crowded, but chances are if you give them nutrients and you give them what they want, they can grow crowded. That's what I've found in, 
And honestly, I do that with everything. My tomatoes, people always say, oh, you plant your tomatoes way too close. Uh, well, uh, my tomatoes have not told me that. Um, and I listen to my tomatoes. I don't listen to what other people say. So I'm just planting these about, about eight to 10 inches apart. And they're gonna be up, they're gonna be growing pretty close together. But as they grow, I'm also gonna be harvesting leaves. So I'm not letting them get to full size anyways. They're gonna be, they're gonna be actively harvested from and enjoyed. So that is why I don't space mine out any further. Otherwise I'm not using my space effectively. So there we go. That is how much I space mine and that's how much you should space yours because I've had I've never had anything other than massive success with my kale. Now in regards to the type of soil you can probably tell this is amazing. This is just the loosest, most amazing soil ever. And obviously it's a bit dry on top, but you can go down even a few, even a few inches there. You got beautiful earthworms, lots of organic matter. So I'm, I'm absolutely in love with this soil. It's just fantastic. Here's a, here's a little earthworm. Oh, here's, here's another earthworm. So you got lots of earthworms in there, lots of organic matter, and uh, and that's just a sign of very healthy soil. So, um, oh, here's another earthworm there. So, you know, you got tons and tons of earthworms here, and that's, again, you want to look for that life. Oh, here's another earthworm. Wow, that's crazy. That's like six earthworms in one, one little hole there. Um, oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's another earthworm. So, wow, okay, that's amazing. But, um, you know, that's what you want to look for. You want to look for very good rich organic matter, earthworms, and other little bugs that show that your soil is very healthy. So that's what I look for in my soil. And, uh, and again, I treat my soil like I want to treat my body. And so if my, if my soil looks very healthy, I know that I'm going to be very healthy if I eat the vegetables that come from it. So there you go. There is a complete growing guide on how to grow kale. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And I highly recommend growing kale. Like I said, it is a very nutrient dense, easy to grow vegetable. And it's something that is extremely expensive in the stores. And that's one thing that keeps me growing more and more kale every year is the fact that I like to grow things that are expensive in the store solely for the fact that if I can grow something that's expensive in the store, I can see more of a more of a return back in my pocket that I can spend on other things. So instead of spending it on food, I'm growing the food and I can go go take Cindy to the movies, go, you know, get a new pair of new pair of jeans or shoes or something, you know, that that I would normally not have the money in the budget to spend on. So um, that's it. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And as always, grow bigger, go home. See ya. Bye.